It's Italian, 500 year old little chapel. You know, Italians love their Roman Catholic stuff. The guy came from Rome and the Vatican to build this here. There's St. Thomas right there, man, in the picture. What? Yeah. This was his place where he died. <laughs> Hyper-modern metro lining. We're traveling back 2,000 years. <clears throat> Actually, 1,950 or so years. 130 years, something like that. There were people here then, too. There were people here like 3,000 years ago, 4,000 years ago, 5, 6, 7,000 years ago. The same lands that I'm riding through right now. We're going to a spot where something interesting happens. And for a lot of they'll think this is interesting. Around two billion people. I'm here to show you. Like my friend Bernard in Goa, Konkani man. Dio Borokuru, Bernard. Dio Borokuru. <laughs> Dio Borokuru. India is nice, man. This is drinking water for the masses. Whoa. I don't want to waste it. Hold on. Ah! Alright, so this is a shared cup. You don't let it touch your lips. And, you know, India is notorious for a history of diseases from bad water and bad water in general. You got free drinking water in the metro. This lady has information, she knows English. And there's restrooms right here, women and men's. Beautiful, beautiful, modern. We got some food over there, drinks. Beautiful, beautiful, modern, nice train station. Our sister, Chennai. Very nice. C I T U. I read an article on Russian news actually recently about those guys. RT News, what up? Kerala! They like they like them in Kerala. I like everything, man. I think it's interesting. Ah! Eats of Chennai. Well, not just them, but anyone who plays golf. Usually it's elite people. It's a rich man's game. They got a golf course right here, a big nice one. Not too many hills, not too big, not too big, but it's decent. Interesting. My boy, Mike, my boys, Mike Wilbon and Tony Kornheiser would like this. They would play. People that like golf to me are very strange, man. It's very weird, actually. I don't play golf. Okay, that's all right. That makes a little bit more sense. It says defense land right there. So this is a golf course. Selfie, selfie. Nandri. Don't want to film any kids. This is a golf course for the military officer or something. Ooh. They might like some golf. But that's interesting. So this is Indian Army. Uh, they put pop wire around it so no one goes in there. Indian Army land. I guess. It's called military. Government land. And they built a golf course. You know, that's cool, man. Give the guy some R&R. &R. What do they call that? Well, what's this guy doing? Eating some pan? No, he's eating some noodles. Make a golf course for your guys. They've got their lives on the line. They're willing to die for India. Hello. Let them play some golf on their time off if they want. That's why they built this. I like that. Something cool. I liked it. From America to the Vatican City to Kerala to Chennai. I've been following St. Thomas. Now I'm going to find the place where he got expired. <laughs> yes. Bernard. Remember, this is for you. Oh, my grandpa Bernard. 98-year-old man. You're going to like this. Roman Catholic and my friend Bernard from Goa. Hello, Bernard from Goa. Dio Borokuru, this is for you. We're gonna find this spot. So you gotta be a real pilgrim, man, to go and try to find this place. Uh, Nowadays, especially. All right, that's all I meant. It's up there somewhere. Uh, not nowadays. In the old days, especially, if you're like a true Catholic or Christian, and you're going on a pilgrimage here. Let's say like in the 1500s, or hello, the 1600s, 1700s, 1800s. People from all over the world probably came to find this spot. You know, the real devout Catholics or Christians or something. 
and now I'm walking through here <laughs> and filming. It's kind of amazing, actually. There, there's definitely no other tourists or anybody around. I bet most I bet most people know of this, but you know, may, they might be Hindu or Muslim or you know, not even religious, maybe. Oh, these kids are gonna fight. Hey, hey, peace, peace, guys. No room for three. Only two, two or one. <laughs> All right, these boys were fighting. <laughs> I love walking around India, actually. It's one of my favorite things. Oh, there's an Anglican church right there. It's one of my favorite things I've ever done in my life is walk through the streets of India. All right, there's some Catholic stuff. We're on the right track. <laughs> cool. Video. All right. I just made it here in time. I'm making a video of my own, but just for, just for the kicks, for the hell of it. Hardly anybody watches, but just for fun. Actually, it's for my grandpa. He, Catholic guy, he would like this. He's 98 years old, and my friend in Goa, his name, he's like 75 years old. He's never been here. And he's really Catholic. Yeah, yeah. We're going up. We barely made it. This gate was built in 1726 at some point by someone. Saint Thomas with the spear that killed him. Awesome. My name is Raymond Michael. I'm entering somewhere cool right now that most Christians probably never even heard of. I was just talking with these people. Nice kid, a nice person just said hello to me, welcome. A pilgrimage is not supposed to be easy. It's like a workout. You gotta look at it as a challenge. I forget where I was, but I walked through the heat one time, no shoes. And then, I, no, that was in Kerala. And then in the Vatican, in Rome, in the Vatican City, they got this place where you go up these stairs on your knees. You're not allowed to go on your feet. They're the same steps of the Palace of Pontius Pilate. They put it on a boat and brought it to Italy. St. Helena, that's another story. That one was definitely not easy, where you go up the stairs on your knees. This is easier than that. Up to the top here. It looks like it's gotta be a nice view. There's the station on the cross. Jesus is with the two other guys at the kill with them. Sun's out, hello guys. Nendri Tamil Nadu Chennai for preserving this spot. All right, we're not there yet. You can see a lot of Chennai from up here. Pretty nice. A little bit of pollution. That's expected in a nine million person city. The signs of the cross, nice statues. Pretty bizarre, pretty crazy. Let's keep it going. Wow, that looks nice out there. Tom, there's the priest. I am the way and the truth, Madonna of India. Nice. Hold up, Pope Francis. You would like this. Mother Teresa, I've been to your hometown in Skopje. Airport's not far from here. This is the spot. Five thousand, five thousand, five hundred and one years ago, some Italians, I think, built this little shrine for the spot, or near the spot, where uh, Saint Thomas, a disciple of Jesus, was was killed. Man, you know Saint Thomas, he should have just stayed in Kerala. Why did he come over here, man? It's a little dangerous, man. <laughs> All right, no jokes. I'm just kidding. It's a very somber place for people. That's cool. They put this here. One, uh, 500 years. Most revered Leopold Guerrieri. Yeah, that's an Italian name. Roman Catholic. I need some water. But I'll be alright. That's what a pilgrimage is all about, man. It's not easy. Like I tell people, from California to the Vatican in Italy to Kerala, all the way to here I travel. Who else done that around here? Nobody. <laughs> I'm not gonna film in there, but that was the largest collection of saint relics. I've traveled all over the world, man. That's the largest collection of saint relics I've seen anywhere on earth. They had pieces of newer saints, their bones like Saint Therese, 
St. Teresa of Calcutta, I've been to her home city in Skopje, North Macedonia. They had parts of St. Stephen, one of the earliest martyrs, which is my confirmation name, Stephen, like Steph Curry. They had St. Francis of Assisi relic in there, which is my favorite saint, San Francisco, California, represent. That's what's named after him. And they had saints of all 12 apostles, which is uh, incredible. And uh, of course, they had St. Saint, uh, Thomas's, who died right around the corner from here. So we're going to find where that happened. He, went, he originally was hiding in this cave called the Little Mount near here. And I don't know where it is. Of course, you got to take this all with faith. It's for the faithful. I'm damn thirsty. Got no shoes on, no shoes in churches. The girl knew English, but they kind of didn't know what I was talking about. I'm trying to like get information quickly. God damn it, man. Oh, the sun looks crazy up there. Black hole sun. 72 AD. That's a long time ago. Going on 2,000 years, kind of. We got a good couple decades to go, but. St. Thomas on this holy hill. Uh, why am I here? Well, I meant to be here. This is called the St. Thomas Walk. Switch off your mobile phone inside the church. I don't want to go inside the church. I want to find the spot where he expired. It's got to be here, maybe. Where is it? Hello, hello. I'm looking for this for all my friends from around the world, Christian, Catholics. They like this kind of stuff. They said, make a video when you go there. Yes, they said, make video when you go there. I want to see my friends in Goa and California and Rome and France, Mexico. I'm from California. Yeah, San, San Francisco. Yes, many hundreds of friends told me, make a video of the St. Thomas place. Yes, lots of nice people come here from India, or Tamil people. I think this is the spot. I'm not sure. I'm going to find out. I'm not going to film inside. Swarming with mosquitoes. All right, in this spot, 17 AD, it's like God's creatures are. <laughs> my evil sins are biting me in there. You gotta keep them moving in there. That place is racked with mosquitoes. I guess it's kind of meant to be a spot where something so crazy happened. All right, so in 72 AD, well, let's let's bring it back a little bit. 50s 50s AD. God, I should remember the date. Oh man, 56 AD, I think. Oh, I'll look it up. Hold on. 52 AD. Four years off by memory. Go, uh, St. Thomas, after talking with all his buddies, the apostles said, I'm going over to India. He went to North India with a uh, Jewish tradesman that knew the area. He landed in Kerala coast, the Malabar coast, a little south of that after the north of India. It didn't quite work out. And there were some Jewish people living there in India already. In 52 AD, which means they were probably there for maybe 100 or 1,000 years before he even got to Kerala. Who knows? Not, maybe not 1,000 years, but hundreds of years for sure. Jewish people were living in India when he got there. So he was able to speak Hebrew with people in Kerala. That's crazy. So that's why he was like, all right, this is a good place to stop. I'm, I, speak Jew, I speak Hebrew. <clears throat> These people speak Hebrew in India for some reason. I'm going to spread the Jesus' word here. And man, there's lots of mosquitoes here. God. <laughs> All right. So he set up seven churches in Kerala. I've been to two of them, I think. And they, he built little church communities with the locals. He, some miracle happened at some water thing where they were praying to some uh, Jain God, Jainism, I think. And uh, he did like a miracle with water where the water like froze in the air. Military airplane. So then a bunch of people converted after that and uh, he built seven churches. So over like 52 AD, you know, we're talking 
over the next 10 years he hung out in Kerala what is now Kerala at the time who knows what kind of kingdom it was I don't know some Indian kingdom they had so many different kingdoms in the past in southern India I can't even think of what it might be but he set up seven church successful church communities and they're still very Catholic there to this day you have the Orient Eastern Orthodox uh, Christ, St. Thomas Christians in Kerala and then of course you have the Roman Catholics who really like this or they built this place they were in Goa with St. Francis Xavier there was a relic of St. Francis Xavier up there I've been to old Goa and saw St. Francis Xavier himself his face <clears throat> alright back to his story so Thomas was hanging out in Kerala he set up seven churches and he made the fateful decision to go out all throughout India. I don't know why, but he did. He trusted the people he knew and stuff. So he went all the way from Kerala on the west coast of southern India, all the way over here to Tamil territory. And uh, you know, some people were, many Hindus and Jains and Buddhists and who knows what else at that time. Probably some other animist religions and beliefs, all kinds of powerful kingdoms and people. <clears throat> Lots of religions in India. Rel India has the most is the most holy country in the world. Has the most religions out of any place on no, earth, including Christianity. So <clears throat> he came over here. And he came to this spot before his death. So right before his death, near here, he was getting chased by some local Jains. I think they were Jains. They, Jain they were you know some thugs, man. They didn't like this guy, some foreigner coming in trying to, trying to control his, their family and people for some reason. He was just preaching the word of Jesus, man. Regardless, that was a dangerous occupation. Even today it is. Hey, religion is dangerous altogether. People kill each other over religion all the time. 2024, look what's going on inside fucking the Holy Land right now. All right, let's focus. 72 AD, so St. Thomas was hanging out around here trying to convert Christians. Some Jains got mad, maybe they were Hindu, I don't know. They chased him down, he hid in a cave over here somewhere called the Little Mount. I need to find that later. <clears throat> he ran from there to here, and he found some stone that he was praying in front of. They have a depiction of it down there. The guys caught him, and they said, all right, man, that's enough of you. We don't like you, man. They didn't care that he was a friend of some holy man that he called Jesus, Yeshua. They didn't care about nothing except for being violent. The workers of the devil, people would say. Which I think mosquitoes are, which this place is ravaged by. I kind of wish they like left like something natural here. I don't know. Maybe this is kind of what it looked like at some point. They kind of like built this whole thing here, but that's all right. I don't even know if this is the spot. All right, so they caught him down. He was praying like this. And then they caught him and stabbed him. I thought, I thought he was stabbed in the back in another depiction I saw, but regardless, the locals, oh, they threw rocks at him too, stoned him. Uh, killed him on the spot. And he was expired. That's how it goes. 72 AD, friend of Jesus, right here in India. <laughs> It's a little difficult to determine things that are 2,000 years old. We're in 2024, as you can see, modern airplanes shooting off around the world. But they got some nice music. All right. St. Thomas Mount National Shrine was built in 1523 by the Portuguese, probably from Goa. Came over here that learned about St. Thomas's martyrdom. The stone cross chiseled by St. Thomas himself, I just saw that while digging the foundation of the shrine that was here. The 2000, almost 2,000 year old cross venerated in the altar. History and tradition says that the cross was bleeding on the 18th of December for several years in the 1500s. Miracles. All right, the wooden painting, I also saw this, of Mother of Mary of God was painted by St. Luke the Evangelist at 50 AD. It was brought to India by St. Thomas as his personal possessions. So there's the painting. That one. Uh, you're going to have to be faithful on that. 
The miraculous painting is one of the oldest paintings in the, of the Mary, the Mother of God in the world, called the Madonna of India. Oh, that's possible, man. I believe it. I believe it. Um, personal belongings. It looks like it was broken apart. So they, they put it back together. Maybe it was refurbished a little bit. All right, holy, this was incredible in there. Holy relics containing finger and toe bone of St. Thomas are displayed in the shrine and relics of the tw all 12 apostles and 124 saints of the Catholic Church are available for veneration and prayer in the shrine. 124 saints? I've never heard of nothing like that in my life. And I've seen some cool stuff all over the world. I've seen the Holy Grail in Valencia, Spain. I've seen pieces of the True Cross in Rome. I've seen the burial spot of St. James. I've seen all kinds of crazy Catholic, Christian stuff. I've seen... All right, let's go in there. No, I'm not taking my shoes off again. I'm going in there. No. God is everywhere okay, in the past, future, service, so. and present. So a man came, went, walked from here all the way to the Himalayas. He's telling me about, and his name was Thomas. I saw this holy man. He gave me this. My favorite St. Michael thing in Tamil. Oh, again, that was a very nice experience. I talked to a holy man. He gave me something nice. My favorite St. Michael image, but with Tamil writing. I gave my book of the, one of St. Thomas's church to the man as a gift. I don't need a book. I read the book. He was interested. They have a 45 foot tall statue of St. Thomas in this place. And they have a copy of this place where he died. There's no cave here anymore, so I don't know. Eh, 2,000 years is a long time. Talk to this nice priest, man, holy man. Talk to this guy that said he's related to the Cholas. His great great grandfather. Maybe. Chola Empire. Now he's Catholic. And lots of very devout Christian people and Catholic people in India. It's very interesting to see because. Not a lot of people think of that one because they beyond. I like how they put their own twist on the songs. They change it into the Tamil language or the Malayalam language, or Malayalam or Konkani language. I've now been to church in Konkani, Malayalam, and Tamil now. Three languages in India. I've been to a Catholic mass of all three. <laughs> now, who would have thought I would ever do that? And I'm at this spot. Where one of Jesus' boys, Thomas, came to India on a whim. He was living here for 20 years, which was nice for him. Um, he came here, and then someone here didn't like him very much and killed him. Jeez. Right in this spot. Well, that's how it goes. Now people will remember him forever, though. So that's cool. A lot of people die, get, get expired. No one remembers them ever again. Actually, most people that expired, no one remembers them. Like me, when I'm expired. <laughs> oh, this was cool, man. <clears throat> All right, there's a few more things over here that I wanted to talk about. But the video got cut off earlier. The Rosary Park, wow. Yeah, so Tamil people, there's a lot of... Hindus, next most is Muslim, and the third most is Christian, man. All right, so they got this painting from St. Luke, holy relics containing the finger and toe bones of Thomas, and 124 other saints, 15th century paintings of the 12 disciples of Jesus Christ, their details of martyrdom, all kinds of gruesome things like this one guy in Armenia that got skinned alive, 60 AD or something. Chennai Calvary depicting Jesus' death on the cross at the height of 300 feet above sea level or looking at Chennai City is an icon on the Holy Hill. Statue of the late John Paul II. Yeah, Polish. He came here in 1986. Wow. St. Thomas Walk leads to depict the last moments of St. Thomas on this hill. Okay, so that kind of told me what's going on here. This top of this hill is where this happened. The very top. Oh, some free drinking water. I could use that. So right up here 
for the St. Thomas thing went down. Not much water left in there. Water is life. Ooh. Didn't taste very good. <laughs> Barif Tiz. Here in India, there's an Armenian guy, I think, buried here. That helped build Tiz. So it says Armenio right there. 1770 something. So an Armenian guy hanging out with some Portuguese. Armenians are very Christian. He helped build this place in India on a spot where St. Thomas. Uh, <clears throat> St. Thomas, the disciple, was killed. Shout out to Albanians, like Mother Teresa here. Mother Teresa uh, was Albanian from Skopje, which is now in North Macedonia. Shipri, Shipri, Mother Teresa, Shipri. Shout out to all my Albanians. <laughs> Here's the 12th station of the cross. Pray to everybody. This was amazing. All the Christians out there, all the Catholics, all the pro Orthodox, all the Coptic Egyptians, all the, the Syrian Egyptian Coptics, all the St. Thomas Christians in e Kerala, all the uh, Ethiopian Christians, all the Armenians, Apollostic Church. <clears throat> I know you guys like this kind of stuff. Shout out Armenia. All the Albanian Christians, Catholic and Orthodox, like Mother Teresa here with Catholic Albanian. Shout out to all the Anglicans from in England, all the uh, Russian Orthodox, Ukrainian Orthodox, Belarusian Orthodox, Greek Orthodox, Romanian Orthodox, Bulgarian Orthodox, Georgian Orthodox. <clears throat> uh, shout out to all the Christians in Constantinople, Istanbul still. Shout out to all the Christians in Lebanon and Gaza and Syria and Israel and the Jerusalem. And uh, what's another place around there? Oh, Jordan and uh, all, there's a bunch of cool ancient Christian communities there. Shout out to and, um, you, uh, you know, all the Presbyterians from Scotland. Shout out to the Baptists and the different kinds of Protestants and everything, Lutherans that came out of Germany in the 1500s. Shout out to the Mormons from Utah. Did you visit that place? Down there? Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, shout out to the Mormons in Utah. Shout out to the Universalitarians and all the people that like Jesus, man, and his disciples. I'm cool with all of you. Why not? I'm cool with everybody. Whole world. That's my philosophy in life. So that's what I'm going to keep doing. I'm walking down from here now. St. Thomas, spot where he was martyred. Excellent history. St. Thomas exploration of India now complete. 52 AD, he arrived in India. 72 AD, he died on this spot. A little bit further from, far from where he arrived, near Guru Vainar or Aleppi, Kerala. He traveled over here. Over the next 20 years, he eventually got over here to Chennai, and yeah, this is where he expired, man. Stabbed by a spear, man. Oh, that must have hurt, but he had faith in his buddy Jesus, his friend, good, good friend. He had faith in his God, and he was probably just like, ah, this was meant to happen, I guess. And now he'll be remembered forever. Look at that. That's how it goes when you expire sometimes for some people, and the modern jets, Flying off to somewhere. That's a big one. Wow. Homeless Jesus. Your homeless friend. Your homeless people in your city. It could could have been like a destined for great things and they just got caught up in the wrong situation. Jesus. Could have happened to someone like a G Jesus kind of figure. You never know. All right, homeless Jesus. Sculpture made by Timothy Schmaltz. Theme for the sculpt. Uh, theme for the sculpture. Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it. You did for me. 
Mercy is to have compassion for and if possible to alleviate another's misfortune. Mercy is a spontaneous product of charity and an act of justice. This act of mercy is manifested through the corporal of spiritual works of mercy. <clears throat> Alright, so the holy man here, the priest, told me about something in this tree. That someone came here in the 1800s or something at some point. I can't see it now. He said there's like a pyramid in here somewhere. Last thing. Sorry, I know I just said bye. But this 175-year-old Ben... Banya tree. Someone came here at some point and did something and they mapped out India and they went all the way to the Himalayas and Mount Everest and his name was Thomas Everest or something. Maybe it had something to do with this guy. 18 years. They camp in Higginat in Maharashtra. A genius who can make great trigonometrical survey launches field work from this place on 10th of April, 1802. Yes, this is definitely the thing. All right, this is Dr. P. Nag, Surveyor General of India. So Mount Everest is named after, that's pretty cool actually. Mount Everest is named after a surveyor. So the British surveyed and mapped out all of India, real meticulously geography. That's what I'm into. This place on. So the map of India and the geographical work of all of India started here. <clears throat> Geograph geography nerd out moment. I'm here in this Catholic shrine place where this disciple Jesus is thought to have been killed. Martyr Thomas. <clears throat> um, but let's talk about geography. Colonel William Lambert, born in 1753 in England and died on 30th January 1833 in a camp in the Himalayas in Maharashtra. A genius who planned great trigonometrical survey launches field work from this place, 10th of April, 1802. So this guy helped map out all of India. He was British. He was the, grand, the uh, surveyor general of India. <coughs> Dr. Colonel William Lempton. So Mount Everest is named after another surveyor of India that first calculated its height, not climbed it, but that's why it's called Mount Everest. So this guy is doing the same kind of work. It started here, the map of India. Whoa. I had a dream about someone named Lilith. St. Thomas, yes. He doubted Jesus' resurrection, doubting Thomas, and he... And you're wrong about the Mary thing. Her Wait. Name is Mary. In all languages, her name is Mary. You are wrong. I don't know why Madonna is associated with her name. You would like to say something at yeah. the end of the video? Actually, there is no association with Mary and Madonna. I've looked it up, so you don't know what you're talking about. I don't know why Mary is some kind of, sometimes associated with the name Madonna, but the Madonna of India, they call it up there. All right. Shout out St. Thomas. He died up on this hill in 76, 8, 72 AD. Jesus is friend. Shout out India. Kerala, Goa, especially since I went there and went to church in Konkani and Malalayam and Tamil I went to also went to church. Just cause, why not? I could use the good vibes, especially now. <clears throat>